Certainly. I uh, began when I was in high school at Osborne High School. I joined the volunteer department, Manassas Volunteer Fire Company, in 1974 and uh, attended the first training class. Actually, the training class started in 1973 and I, in December, and rolled over into that year. So uh, became involved in early age, born and raised here in Manassas. Uh, so being involved in the fire company was something my father had been involved in. My neighbor was the chief previously, so I had a lot of interactions with the volunteer fire company. The way I uh, went throughout my career is I, I volunteered at Manassas until I went away to college and went to James Madison University and volunteered at uh, Harrisonburg Fire Company Number 1 while I was in college in Harrisonburg and advanced through the ranks in that organization to become the captain which was the highest ranking position in the volunteer organization at that time in Harrisonburg. And uh, I was the first college student that had ever been uh, selected to be captain in the uh, volunteer organization there. And upon graduation, I was hired by Princeton County uh, Fire and Rescue. And my first assignment was at Evergreen Station uh, out on Route 15. Mm -hmm. I worked there for a little less than a year. And then I uh, came to the city of Manassas as a career firefighter. Uh, working there for several years uh, as a firefighter here in the city and then uh, went into private industry for a while in the safety field before coming back to Princeton County as a lieutenant in 1990 and been in the career fire and rescue service ever since. While I was in the private industry uh, for work I also volunteered at Stonewall Jackson Volunteer Fire Company where I uh, was promoted up through the ranks to be chief at one point before I went back to be a career firefighter. Well, fire and rescue has changed greatly in, in those years. Uh, whereas it used to be a predominantly volunteer uh, fire and rescue provision in the 70s with career personnel working uh, weekdays, basically seven to five, uh, the volunteer community, not just here in Manassas, but throughout the country has started to fade and dwindle a little bit. So the career staff has had to start working 24-hour shifts, and that's true throughout Princeton County and Manassas. Uh, and nothing to take away from volunteers, but there's a lot of pressure on people today, work life, uh, dual family incomes, uh, to get all the training that's required is very difficult. And that's one of the things that has changed over the years is the understanding the problems with fire and EMS and the training that's required to uh, provide the service that the citizens expect expect uh, takes a lot of uh, time and effort and uh, so that's one of the things that also hinders the volunteers but the change in the uh, fire conditions is, is great uh, when we began when I began uh, back in the 70s for if a fire started in a home a resident had 17 to 18 minutes before the smoke would overtake them to get out of the house today with the change in the contents in the house the open floor concept of homes if a fire starts in a home, the resident only has about three to four minutes before they are overcome by the toxic smoke and fumes to get out. So rapid change uh, in conditions and the survivability of occupants. And with that also the change, because of the change in contents, fires used to take 27 minutes or so to until they reach what we call flashover where a whole room is involved in fire. That has changed to now where it's uh, three to five minutes that the flashover occurs. So again, the hazard to residents has gone up greatly, causing more severe fires and uh, more danger to our firefighters. The, um, the rapid spread of fire and the new construction, uh, new construction collapses quicker. Uh, lightweight construction is used nowadays, whereas back in the 70s, we used solid wood beams. Now it's trusses and I-beams that fail quickly within just a few minutes of fire exposure. Te technology has changed greatly over the years. Uh, when I started, they were just beginning the use of self-contained breathing apparatus. And some of the old timers back then did not believe in using self-contained breathing apparatus. Now we know the dangers of smoke and the cancer causing agents that are in fire. So the use of SCBA is routine. Uh, back in the day to find a fire, uh, we, had, we got alerted by the fire siren uh, we didn't have miniatures like we have today, so we had to go to the fire station and find out where the incident was and then respond. Now we have instant communications. The technology 
provides the information of where the fire is immediately. Uh, we also, back in the day, we, we hand drew the maps of all the streets of how to get to a fire. So we'd look up the address in our street book, know how to get there. Now we have computers that automatically route us the quickest way to the incident. Well, while I was chief, we went through a, a real transition here in the city of Manassas, and uh, I am proud as to where we have ended up. Uh, there was some turmoil and discontent when I first arrived, and we have, we have calmed that over to, so that everybody is working together. Uh, a few key things that have occurred while I've been chief is we've increased the staffing of uh, the career service, which was needed. We were understaffed when I first arrived here. We've implemented supervision throughout the department. We created battalion chiefs and captains in the past five years to provide the guidance and supervision to the fire and rescue providers. Our EMS service ha has advanced greatly. We've united all three agencies in the city of Manassas under one EMS license and we've won several awards from the Regional EMS Council for our EMS activities, whether it be our uh, Operational Medical Director, Dr. Lucky received award. Uh, we've just received word that one of our providers, Valerie Custerbeck, is being recognized as outstanding EMS provider in the Northern Virginia region uh, next week. Uh, we've had several other of our members recognized uh, by the EMS Council for the advances that we've done. We were actually recognized one of the first six agencies in the state of Virginia to be awarded an Agency of Excellence Award for our EMS operations. I am, I am extremely confident in Chief Rob Clemens who will be coming in uh, to take over when I leave. Uh, I've known Chief Clemens for over 30 years now. Uh, he brings an excitement and energy that will be well received here in Manassas. His, uh, ability to work with different people is outstanding and I know that he will do an excellent job and uh, I as I've talked to him I, I've told him I've tried to set it up for his success uh, we have in the capital improvement program for the city of Manassas have a new station uh, that's funded uh, getting the architectural services uh, under contract this week so that when he arrives uh, he will be able to begin the process of building a new station on the southwest side of the city. Well, uh, you know, it's, it's finally become a reality. I actually announced my uh, retirement back in January, and now it's June 2nd. Uh, and when they announced Chief Clemens to take my place, that's when it really hit me that I really am uh, getting ready to leave uh, a profession I've done for 42 years. Uh, but I am ready to move on. I uh, have a chance to do some traveling in the next uh, few months. I uh, hope to go to uh, Europe for a few months in September and October, uh, travel around England and some things. And I'm also working with some builders down in North Carolina. My wife and I intend to uh, retire to North Carolina, Ocean Isle Beach area of North Carolina. So we're going to build a house over the next year and she can retire next May. And uh, together we will go down to the Beach area, play golf, walk the beach, uh, relax and have a good time.